You ready, boss? All right. Well, uh, thank you all for coming today. We appreciate uh, you um, committing the time to be here. Uh, today, we want to just take a, a few minutes to talk about um, the efforts that this administration has been taking, uh, taking in, uh, over the last uh, almost year and a half to attempt to move this city forward. Uh, we've been um, attempting to do the very best job we could uh, with the amount of time and the expectations uh, that have come along with this job, as well as uh, that, uh, and we hate to say it, the kinds of things that, the challenges that predated this particular administration. Uh, in our opinion, we've been doing uh, a yeoman's job with the uh, lift that we have. Uh, our staff has been working uh, overtime. The directors have been doing the very best job that they could. Uh, today, um, we were absolutely disturbed uh, by the actions uh, of this council, which is a culmination of things that have uh, gone on. Uh, in a recent article um, the, in the Clarion Ledger, it talked about moving the city forward, the progress that it takes in order to move the city forward. Well, uh, we have attempted to do that only to see um, uh, certain of our efforts obstructed. Uh, we've seen uh, where our efforts to bring on a new uh, bank as our depository, uh, that particular effort was stalled and obstructed. Uh, negotiations with Comcast, uh, the negotiations to see, uh, to have um, CDM Smith this time last year to come aboard to help create an RFP to get us on the right track in order to get this biosolids contract that has been extremely contentious over the last several months out. All of these things uh, have been in front of the council and have been uh, delayed, uh, votes have been delayed, and we have not been able to get traction on many of these. Today, uh, the council uh, voted against uh, having a wastewater treatment um, uh, plan and uh, vendor on board. They had to come back and reconsider um, that particular motion. What we're saying is that we need, uh, we need the cooperation of this council. We need the petty politics to be put aside. And we need people who want to see us move. There, there's been this talk about uh, the, the council not getting, uh, or the administration not getting items uh, in a timely enough fashion. The process has not changed, uh, Mr. Gates, since uh, uh, I got here in 2009 of how items are entered into an agenda. We have scheduled uh, meetings with council as individuals. We have created an opportunity for them to be briefed uh, that, that, that uh, we did not get responses and only maybe one or two people would show up to. We, there was a, uh, at one point during an open meeting, uh, the reason and the rationale for not attending was because uh, one of the council members feared that it was unethical for us to be having uh, these private briefings with them where no action would be taken. Uh, we've also created opportunities where I specifically assign uh, CAO and deputy CAOs to council members and they still refuse to meet. We're at a point now where we absolutely agree, Mr. Gates, we got to move forward. But it has to be a collective effort in moving forward. It has to be something where we put the taxpayers first. I want to thank Councilman Stokes uh, for upholding the city's agreement with the EPA and the Mississippi Department of Environmental Quality uh, and uh, through his vote today uh, for the biosolids contract. We are now in a situation where we will not meet uh, the EPA consent decree deadline of December 2017, which will result in a $1,000 a day fine. That's $30,000 a month. We've already got folks furloughed. We've been talking about cutting services in certain areas. And the simple fact that you don't like a process or you don't agree uh, with the way the council uh, or with the way the administration has decided to create competition through RFP processes. On one hand, uh, we've been asked to make sure that we create a competition through RFPs. On the other hand, today uh, and in a previous meeting, we heard from the Ward 1 councilman that we are doing too many RFPs. So, you know, as an administration, we think it is uh, our responsibility to make sure that we're putting this city's and the tax, its taxpayers' best interest forward, and we want to make sure uh, that we're doing that. We uh, believe that, that this uh, is a, a movement of obstruction. Uh, we have created a clear and open uh, process. It is a clean uh, process of competition. 
Uh, they recently sent our process to uh, the, the state agencies, including the AG. And in that, if the AG had found anything that was uh, inappropriate, then he would have opined such. But instead, they remanded that back to the lap of this council, who still refused to move on this particular item in the affirmative. Finally, uh, these people who are standing around me, they are the subject matter experts. They are. And you cannot um, take the word over a contractor, uh, of a contractor, over the word of the subject matter experts. These people have your best interests at heart. They do. The contractor has his or her own best interests at heart. And you cannot ask the director to give information only when you want them to give it, but then turn around and receive a text message from uh, contractors who are sitting in the audience who want to help to influence an item that they have on the agenda. So we're saying to the citizens, we need your help. Uh, this is a clarion call to not only hold uh, this council's feet to the fire, but this administration's feet to the fire. This is a today is election day. And you will take a stand uh, today at a poll somewhere, and you will say that this is the behavior that we want out of those, elect those elected officials who represent us. And that is the same expectation that you should have. That is the same expectation that you should have of your local uh, municipal elected body. I'll entertain questions at this time. What's the next step now that this has been voted down? What's the next step? To well, uh, the next step is that we. Um, by virtue of uh, ordinance cannot bring it back for a year. Uh, we have to start this RFP process over with, uh, over again, which puts us um, past the spring uh, in being able to get the process started. And this is bigger than just one particular uh, agenda item. You know, we, we had the Comcast uh, item where we were attempting to start negotiations and this item was placed in a committee and sat there until we had until the time lapsed uh, for the negotiations or the opportunity rather in a time frame for us to get the best out of the negotiation. And that's that's uh, this is uh, this conversation is about a systemic uh, uh, movement that we believe. What would you like to see happen now to, out of your council? You know, I would like to see um, the same the same expectation that they have out of me. I'd like to see it out of them. L be transparent. Talk to me the same way you want me to talk to you. Uh, when we do talk and have a conversation, let the same thing that was said behind closed doors be said on the outside of the doors. If you've committed to something on the inside of the door, make sure that your hand goes up on the outside of the door. That's all we're asking. We're asking that you um, uh, do your due diligence. We're asking that the, county, uh, the, the council does their due diligence and give the men and women behind me the benefit of the doubt prior to giving the benefit of the doubt to a contractor. There's been conversation about uh, I think uh, the Northside Sun said a Yarba political ally could get a contract. Well, uh, there are political allies uh, more than just for Tony Yarba. And many of them get the benefit of the doubt um, because they understand that in a strong mayor, weak council form of government, Tony Yarba can only put a contract forward, but they need at least four votes, four hands to go up in favor of that. So we need to be sure that we uh, unite around the best interests of the citizens. Does this set Jackson back in terms of what you wanted to do? For Absolutely. You know, 2016 uh, is supposed to be a banner year for the city. Uh, it's supposed to be a year where we see construction happening, where we see our workforce development program, the Jackson 500, going forward, where we have employed 500 men and women uh, who are uh, from areas of the community who are impoverished, who may have had um, uh, criminal backgrounds. It's where we want to be able to see them get to work. It's where we want to be able to make sure that citizens are enjoying the benefit of uh, a health clinic. But that's being delayed or has been delayed up until today uh, in the approval of the rental agreement. So we, we think that we are um, uh, in a place of regression if we don't deal with this right now. Is this the majority of the council? Well, um, I think if you, at the end of the day, what you see is that um, most of the time there are only about four council members here. And so four council members are typically making decisions for the city. Um, and they're doing it from a position or a place of uh, where I, quite frankly, I can't understand. You know, I asked the question today. 
what is driving the decision making. And uh, one of the council persons, he vacillated back and forth between what his, his decision was on the record. So you're basically saying knock off the politics. I am saying let's put petty politics aside and let's do what these people sent us here to do. The Northside Sun had reported that the scores in the process had changed. Could you address that or go into more detail? Yeah, actually the scores in the process um, were affected because the, the formula uh, by um, the scores, there was a formula that was not used and it was uh, not done by city staff. It was done by uh, a third party agency uh, who the city contracted in order to see that happen. Quite frankly, that scoring change benefited uh, the other party. 